Hi everybody and welcome to the actual third video of the VB.net 2013 series. I'm Nicholas Dingle once again bringing you this variables and data types tutorial. This is probably the biggest staple when it comes to programming so you must ensure that you understand exactly what I'm talking about by the end of the video. I'm going to try my hardest to explain what a variable is, how you use it, things associated to it and the different data types available to you. If you don't understand them by the time I get to the last, well, the, the end of the video, I should say, then you really need to find another resource or email me and tell me this video was crap. Okay, so please do that. To give you a quick overview of what we're going to look at, we're going to look at variables in both algebra and computing because really they didn't start with computing. They started with mathematics, and we're going to start just there on this video. We're going to move on to the different data types that are available to you, how you declare a variable, or in another way to saying it, create a variable, and finally some of the operators that we're going to use with variables. Okay, All of this is extremely important. Please, hopefully when you walk away, variables, data types, declaring them, and operators all make sense to you in some way or another, even if it's a small understanding. Okay, To get this going, let's stick with the slideshow for a bit. I'm sorry about that. There's not much there's about half of this video will be practical, I promise. Moving into it, variables really, as I said before, they need them to remember some data. Okay, the last program we made wasn't interactive at all. Okay, and computers need some way of remembering things and variables are how we do it. And you need to know one variable can remember one piece of data at a time. Okay, if we want to remember two things, we make two variables. If we want to remember ten things, you make 10 variables and so forth. Okay, There is a more advanced way of variables but we're not going to get into that today. And as I said at the start, variables weren't invented for computing. It was something that was invented years and years ago and it's known as algebra today. Okay, Moving along with this one, let's have a quick look at the algebra. We've got x equals 2 times 50. Now hopefully we all know now that means that x would have the value of 100. Okay, if we perform the 2 times 50, the variable in that line is the x. Okay, the reason we call, well I won't go into the reasons, just know that that x is known as a variable. And even in the more complex algebraic formulas, x equals 2a divided by 10c, we have three variables. We have x on the left, we have a, and we have c as well. And they're all individual variables each one. All right. And basically what I'm trying to get at is they're represented as a letter. They're used to represent an unknown number. So for example, going back quickly, we have x equals 2 times 50. It's unknown at that point. But if we solve 2 times 50, we know then x equals 100. Okay. For the second one, I understand everybody's probably yelling at the screen right now saying, what's the values of a and c? I don't have any. We're not going to go into that one. But just know that it's used to represent an unknown number and their values can change. And thus, that's why we call it a variable because something variable changes often. And please note that whole numbers, if you don't know this, that whole numbers in mathematics are known as integers. All right? And just so you know that. But what about computing? Okay, that's in mathematics. They are a letter, they're unknown numbers, and they can change. All right, so in computers, we've got a very similar concept, okay? The same concept is they have a name, and the data can change as much as we need. All right, but computers have longer names, okay? They can have full words or sentences, and I'll get into that in a moment, the people yelling at me saying they can't be sentences. Okay, they can have longer names known as identifiers. So the name of a variable is called an identifier, if you ever hear that. The next bit is that we know that in algebra, they mainly represent just numbers, in computers, we can have different types of data, such as strings and photos and things like that. And we're going to get into that today. All right. In fact, how about right now? Okay. Here's some of the data types that are included. So the simplest one we can look at is the signed integer. Okay. Remembering that in maths, an integer is a whole number. All right. So a signed integer can be a positive or a negative whole number. Okay, the flip side of that is the unsigned integer. So not having a sign on the front means it can't have a positive or a negative sign. So it means it can only be positive whole numbers. 
and it's also in the brackets I've put integer and u integer. This is actually what Visual Basic knows them as. So if you wanted to to have an unsigned integer, you would use u integer for that. We have single or double floating point numbers, also known as a single or a double, and those ones are used for enormous numbers which have fractional parts to them. Okay, the next type is a Boolean, which is also known as just a Boolean in Visual Basic. And this one's an interesting one. It comes from the, math, the Boolean mathematics. Okay, I won't go into that right now. But a Boolean is something that can be true or it can be false. It can't be anything else. And it can't be both at the same time. It can only be one or the other. The next we have a character, or known as a char. It can be a single letter or a number. I'll be very specific here. It can actually be more than that, but we're not going to get into that. It's just a single character at a time. String is many characters, okay? So that's probably, this is the most interesting data type that we're going to come across because it can be a letter, just a single one. It can be empty. It can also be a word. It can be a sentence. It can be a whole paragraph. And sometimes, depending on the programming language, can be whole novels if you really want these strings to be, okay? So it's a very interesting data type in that it doesn't limit itself to just being a word. It can be as many things as it wants. Now, one thing I quickly will step back and tell you about, a character can be a number. The one thing to remember, however, is that to a computer, if you're using a character and you're storing nine, it doesn't actually look at that nine as the number nine. It looks at it as the character nine. So we can't do any maths with a character. The only things that we can do maths with are generally integers, so both of these, or a single or double floating point number. All right, this might be confusing as hell, so let's go straight into the next example, which is going to have exactly what we want, how to declare a variable, or in this particular case, how to create a variable. In Visual Basic, you use this terminology. You go dim, and then you put the name of the variable. So these diamonds I've put here, everybody, just represent, fill it in. So we put the name of our variable, we use the keyword as straight after, a data type that we want, and these square brackets represent something that's optional. You don't have to have this, but you can have equals and the data straight afterwards. All right, so for an example, let's say I want to make a variable called number of cows. Don't ask me why, number of cows for sure. And it's gonna be a number. Because it's gonna be a number, I'm gonna have it as an integer, okay? And this would be the line of code that I write. I go dim. And by the way, dim stands for declare in memory. It's a very old school thing that came from VB6. But we've still got it. Declare in memory num of cows as an integer. There's a couple of things to note here. You'll notice that num of cows doesn't have any spaces in it. That's important. Okay? No spaces whatsoever because we're not allowed to have spaces in a variable name or an identifier if you want to call it that. And I use this casing. I've got a capital O and a capital C for each new word that I've got. This is called camel capitalizing. Okay. What this means is that num capital O F capital C for cows. Okay. So I can easily read the three different words inside that. Okay. Another example. Let's say we need to keep the temperature of the day. Temperatures can be fractional. So let's have dim temperature as a single. That could also be double if you wanted it to be. Okay, let's say I wanted the sentence, hello everyone, in a variable, we'd go dim sentence as string equals hello everyone. Now, you'll see I've got quote marks around this. That's because if you put quotes around something, it becomes what you call a literal string. And I'll talk about literals in a very close time. The next one, dim has paid as boolean equals false. So we've got a variable called has paid, which is a boolean, which can be true or false and I'm setting it to false to start with. Okay, I am gonna pause at this moment. There is eight more slides, about halfway, but let's have a look in Visual Studio and have a go at some of these variables and start using them a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new project. Okay, in this one, I'm gonna call it variables. Click okay, it's in the same directory as I used last in the second video, excuse me. All right, let's zoom in, and here's our code. If you want to know how to zoom in and out, it's me holding down on control and using the scroll wheel on the mouse. All right, a couple of lines down. Now, let's just say for 
example's sake, let's stick with the integer examples. Okay, I want a, a variable called x, and I want to put numbers inside of it. So I have to tell Visual Basic dim. Okay, I give it a name. Let's say just x for this case. I use the as keyword. It has to be there. And you'll see already, you've got all this stuff that comes up. This isn't gibberish. This is actually things that you can choose. All right, all these different types exist. Okay, but they're not all basic data types like the ones we've been talking about. For example, if I go to Boolean, you see it's got this little icon there. That represents that it's a simple data type. The rest of them represent completely different things, and I'm not going to go into that just yet. All right, I want integer for this case because I want a whole number. I'm just going to write integer. Now, please remember that integer is spelled I-N-T-E-G-E-R, not integer. Okay, you'll get an error for that. And we'll get into errors in the next video, everyone. Let's just stick with the simple stuff. Now, if I wanted to put a number inside of x, okay, it's just like you would do anything in algebra. You would go x equals 10. Okay, And what I'm basically saying there is the value of 10 is being assigned to x. And that was going to be my next slide, so I'll show that off now. If we want to change the value of a variable, we use the assignment operator. And that's it. That's all you do. You say your variable name on the right, on the left I should say, Ugh. variable name on the left, equals and then the value on the right that you want to change it to. So x equals 10, that means I'm putting the value of 10 inside of x. All right, let me do a read line because I want my program to stay on the screen. Nothing happens. Okay, it's a little bit weird. Why are these windows here? Go away. Sorry, everyone. Don't know why it's opened all then. Nothing happens. Nothing's been put on the screen. And I hope you've guessed it. It's because there's no console.write line. If we don't write line, then the console is not going to write anything to the console. Okay, all I'm doing is read lining. In fact, if I get rid of read line, it's just going to flash at me. It'll perform, it'll create a variable, it'll put 10 inside of it, but then it's going to close the program when it hits that. So if I want to write something to the screen, we do console.write line, or write for that case. Now, let's say I put x, because I want to see what the value of x is, and then I read line, press play. All it's done is written the, the letter x. What I really want is the number 10 to show you that it's storing number 10. Now this is a literal string. Now a literal string means that's exactly what it is. If there's an x inside those brackets, that's literally what we're going to print. We're going to print x. All right. Now I don't want to print the letter x. I want to print my variable x. And to do so, get rid of the quotes. Okay, and press play. And you can see we've got number 10. All right, let's use a bit of right and right line. If I go console.write, the value of x is, and I put a space after it, and I'll show you why in a second. Okay, so really it should say the value of x is, and then the number after it. There it is, the value of x is 10. Perfect. What if we change this number up here? What if we go 50? And press play. There it is, the, x, the value of x is 50. All right, that's simply it. Now, that's pretty boring. Again, we're, st we're simply storing a number. What would be the difference between me doing that and just typing in that? Okay, there is no difference at the moment. Every time I run my program, it's always going to be 50. Never changes. Okay, so let's bring in our second set of operators, everybody, is arithmetic operators. Now, if you don't know what arithmetic is, simple maths. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Let's quickly go through those, because it's actually more than that. So there's our assignment operator, the equals, just to change a variable. Here you go, here's your arithmetic. So we've got 2 plus 5, so the plus is our addition. We've got subtraction, there's your minus symbol. Multiplication is your asterisk, okay? It's not the letter X, it's an asterisk. Division is your forward slash or your backslash. And I'm going to leave it with you, there's a difference between the two of them. You try them out, see what you find. The next couple of ones we've got is pretty interesting because a lot of people don't know about this one. It's called modulus. Okay, two mod. You actually use the word mod. It's not a symbol. Five. In a lot of other programming languages, it's a percentage sign. Modulus actually is a division. 
but instead of getting the whole value, we get the remainder. So, and let's go through the rest before I demonstrate that. We've got power of, two to the power of five, and then we've got what's called a concat, or a concatenation. All this is is joining two strings together. So I've got a literal string of hello, and a literal string of world, and the ampersand will join them together, or I'll concatenate them. Okay, these are all of our arithmetic operators. Let's have a quick go at them. I'm going to make a second variable called y as an integer, and I'm going to put y equals, I don't know, 70. That's fantastic. Okay, and then let's perform our different operators. Okay, let's do a right line, and let's call it addition. Okay, and let's go x plus y. Already gone there, which is always crap. You can't just simply, we can actually do this. We're allowed to perform these operators inside a right line. We're allowed to do that. But if you ever want to write a string and then put a variable, you must use the concatenate operator. So our right line is the word addition and this x plus y. Okay, you may not make sense at the moment, but the more you use it, the easier it's going to get to going to be. So 50 plus 70 is 120. Perfect. Let's do the rest of them. Okay, I'm going to swap these numbers actually. Sorry everyone. 70 and 50. I want to make the second one smaller. Otherwise I'm going to get really weird things. Alright, to be lazy, I'm going to copy and paste. So if I highlight this line, right click and copy, or you can control C if you're up for it. Right click and paste, or control V. And let's go subtraction. So x minus y. Next one would be multiplication. Wow. So x times y, which is our asterisk. Next one, division. Sorry if I'm going too quick. Is our forward slash. Pause the video if you can. The next one was modulus. This is a weird one. So we actually write the word mod. Should go blue. That's perfect power of, which is going to be massive, which is shift 6, gives us that symbol, and what was the last one, I had concatenate, let's ignore that one, okay, because we've got numbers and not words, alright, so let's press play, lots of stuff happening there, so, 120, 20, 3500, etc, 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 that's great, don't worry about this one too much, everyone. This is scientific notation, if people know what that is. And I'm not going to go into it today. So, I want to focus on modules a little bit here. Okay, the division was 1.4. So, our whole value was 1. Our remainder was 4. Okay, so remembering that modulus is a division, but returns us the remainder. If we get 70 divided by 50, the remainder would be 20. Okay, because that's the difference between them. And that's... Modulus actually comes in extremely handy down the line, okay? And that's a really good one. I'm actually going to leave all of that code for the entire video. We're going to come back. We're going to keep moving on, actually, not come back to it at all. Let's keep moving, okay? The next set of operators that we should look at, okay? We've had a look at the arithmetic one. Let's look at relational, okay? So we're going to be able to check the relationship between a left and a right-hand side. So let's say we've got two numbers and we need to check their relationship, we use a relational operator. All right, bear with me for this one. Basically, a relational operator will always return if true or false, depending on it. So for this big example, we've got 10 is less than 20, which is true, okay? If you haven't guessed already, the relational operator is that less than symbol right there. And let's say, let's look at the opposite. 10 is greater than 20 would return false because 10 is a smaller number than 20. And there's our relational operator again. Ooh, that was a good word. So all of the relational operators, we've got a fair few of them. We've got the less than, okay? In this particular case, two is less than five, so it would be true. We've got a greater than case, so two is greater than five, would return a false. We've then got less than or equal to. Now, a lot of people are probably swearing at the screen again, because usually it's a less than symbol with a little line. Unfortunately, we don't have that on our keyboard. So in VB, it's less than and the equals sign. 
and it's exactly how you read it, less than or equal to. So this one here, 2 is less than or equal to 5, so that would be true. Greater than or equal to is the same deal. Greater than or equal to, that would return false. And we've got more of them. We've got equal to. 2 is equal to 5 would return false. Not equal to. 2 does not equal 5. So we've got the diamond, the less than and the greater than together would return a false. And there are heaps more relational operators for strings. However, not this video. I'm going to do a specific video for strings, which will probably be the next one. All right. So those together, let's have a look at this in Visual Basic. We've got a couple more slides to go. All right, and we're almost done. Let's have a look at these two numbers, x and y. All right. So x is less than y. This is how I was writing it in my slideshow. That doesn't mean anything to Visual Basic. What are we doing with this? We're doing nothing. If we want to write it to the screen, then we should use a right line. All right. And because I want the program to pause, console.readLine. And just for the sake of prettiness, I'm going to put in a clear. So it's going to write all of our other operators. We're going to clear the screen and have a look at our relational operators. And in fact, let's put the word less than. Don't forget you concatenate. All right, so we write less than, and it should tell us true or false if x is less than y. So we press play. Yep, let's skip past this. Error. Okay, that didn't really help us. So, what's that saying there? Is that it doesn't like this piece of code that we've written right here. Let's try putting brackets around it. See if that works. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, that's perfect. Why is it false? Because 70 isn't less than 50. Okay, same thing as before. I'm going to copy and paste all this. I'm going to try out the other operators. So greater than, less than or greater than, greater than or equal to, equal to, not equal to, and that was all of them. So greater than, less than, or equal to, greater than, or equal to. I'm just going to hide this, everybody, quickly so you can see all my code. Um, equal to and not equal to. All right, so these are all our operators. Let's make sure we change these, otherwise it's not gonna be useful to us. Greater than, less than, or equal to. Greater than or equal to. Equal to is just one equals. In some other programming languages, it's a double equals, just one in Visual Basic, and not equal to, not equal to. It's a diamond. Hit play, ignore that, and tells us all the different facts. So x is less than y is a false, x is greater than y is true, and we just keep going from there. All right. The great thing about this kind of program is we can change these numbers. We can just change it to six or whatever like that, and we get completely different answers, okay? Completely different, which is fantastic because six is less than 50, six is not greater than 50, and you can have a play around with it, okay? So this is our arithmetic, okay, or arithmetic, however you want to pronounce it. This is your relational operators, and there's one more set of operators we haven't even looked at yet, and it's called logical operators. Okay, go away, you. Now, let's say the relational operator we've got isn't as complex as we need it to be. This is when you bring in the logical operators. They'll still produce a true or a false, okay? But let's have a look at the first example. 10 is less than 20, and 15 is greater than 2. So we've got a left-hand side and a right-hand side of our logical operator. Okay, in this case we do. So 10 is less than 20 is true, and 15 is greater than 2 is true. So basically this will boil down to true and true. So the whole thing becomes just one single true. Okay, and then we've got another one. Now I've changed this to a greater than symbol. So 10 is greater than 20 is false, and 15 is greater than 2 is true. So we'll have false or true, and that boils down to true. How do I know that? I just do. Bear with me, because I'm going to explain these in a moment. So we've got a lot of different logical operators. The and we've already looked at. We've got the or, which we already looked at. Then we've got the not, which is a special case. There's no left-hand side or right-hand side of the not. 
just the right hand side okay and I'll go through that in a second and then we've got XOR okay which again has a left hand side and a right hand side now to give you a quick explanation of what these are let's have a look at it these are the rules which apply with an AND operator both sides must be true for the whole thing to be considered true all right I'm going to pause there okay let's have a look at that okay console.clear get a new screen let's do a right line all right so let's what can we do there let's just use the ones on the slideshow okay so the one on the slideshow was 10 is greater than 2 and 5 is greater than 2 okay so let's just do that get rid of my quotes so 10 is greater than 2 I'm putting these in brackets as you can see and 5 is greater than 2 okay so all I'm hoping out of this everybody is a true or a false okay it might look a bit awkward but all you want is a true or a false out of all of this so there's our arithmetic, there's our relational, and we get true. Because 10 is greater than 2 and 5 is greater than 2. So true and true. So the whole thing comes down to true. All right, you've got to try these out to get really used to them. All right, the next one, the or, either side can be true or must be true for that much. Okay, the not, so let's, I'll ex demonstrate this in a second. The not operator inverts whatever's in front of it or next to it. All right. So if you have not false, what's not false? Well, true. What's not true? It's false. Okay. So it just flips our results. Okay. The next one, the XOR, the sides must be different. If they're the same, it'll produce a false. Okay. So let's go through these examples here. And this is the last thing. I want to demonstrate before we start talking to the user. Okay, so I talked about the OR. Okay, so 10 is greater than 2 and 5 is greater than 2. Well, actually, no, let me step backwards. Let me change 10 is less than 2 because that's false and that's true. So we get a false for that because both sides must be true for an AND to give me a true. Okay, let's try the OR. Now remembering this one's false and this one's true. I get a true. Okay? So one side has to be true. So if this one here is false, so if I've got false or false, the whole result, the whole thing boils down to a false. Okay? Let's do the XOR before we do this. Remembering I've still got false, XOR false. Okay, so the rules for that one where they must be different. So there's the interesting part. So I'll make that a true. And we get true as a result. And then I'll make this one true. And all of a sudden we get a false. Because it's true or XOR true. Which means that they're not different. Okay. So the last one I didn't represent was not. Now, just for the sake of example, let me get rid of that. 5 is greater than 2 is true. If I put a not in front of those brackets, I get a false because it just simply flips whatever's next to it. Okay, so that's a pretty long slideshow there, everybody. That's talking about variables, talking about data types, talking about relational operators, logical operators, and arithmetic operators. There's a couple of things I still haven't gone through, and I quickly want to do them before we finish. So I'm going to wipe this code. I want to talk about our different data types that we can use. So I talked about heaps of them up here. I talked about your signed, your unsigned, your single, double, boolean, char, oh, char, I should say, or string. Okay, so how do you use these? Let's have a quick look. Let's dim some of our ones. So num of cows as, and we can even do, because you can't have a negative number of cows, we really want an unsigned integer. Okay, and I told you in the slideshow that it stands for U int. And actually, there it is. Okay, and I also showed you that we can have the data straight afterwards equals something, straight off the bat. And we can do that here too. If I go equals 10, Visual Basic's happy with it. Now, because an unsigned integer can't be negative, here's a quick little demo. If I put a negative, U integer can't be a negative 10. 
So we just take the negative off and we've got it perfectly fine. Let's dim the next one. Let's have, um, what was it, temperature as a single. There it is. Equals, I don't know, what is it today? I think it's about, it's going to be 21.7. Sounds good. So let's go. It's fairly cold. All right. Moving on to the next one that we had, which is sentence. Okay, so dim sentence as a string equals something, and you must have quotes around it. I promise you that. If I go hello world, okay, in quotes, it's fine. If I take those quotes away, Visual Basic complains. It has no idea what it's doing because it's looking for variables called hello and world. If you put quotes around it, it's a literal string. Visual Basic knows exactly what Hello World is. Okay, last one on that slideshow there. We had, let me quickly find it. Okay, has paid. So Dim has paid as Boolean. And we even get a selection of true or false. I had false, so let's go with that. So there's all these different types of variables that we can have. And you can write any of these to the screen. So num of cows. Wow, now of cows, that doesn't make sense. Sorry, everyone. Notice the Visual Basic capitalizes things to, for you too. If I go number of cows and just click off anywhere, it automatically capitalizes for me. Now, not a lot of programming languages do that, so take advantage of it in Visual Basic. Temperature. Whoa, what am I doing? Sorry, everyone. Temperature. And then I can console.write line my sentence. I'm pressing space to auto finish and then I can write my has paid. And then let's just do a quick read line to pause the program. All right, so hopefully what we should see here is 10, 21.7, hello world, false. That's all you should see. Dink, dink, 10, 21.7, hello world, and false. And that's pretty much it. The only one I didn't show off was character, so I can go, let's just call it C for the sake of simplicity, C as char, and you put quotes around a character. Okay, so I can go P. Now here's the interesting thing. We can actually do relational operators on different data types. Okay, so I've got a character called C, which inside of it contains the letter capital P. You have D, which contains the letter little p. So I can actually do a quick relational operator on that one as well. And I can even do it on strings and booleans and singles, anything that's going to boil down to a true or a false. So I can say, if C is equal to D. Okay, so this should give me a true or a false if they're the same. All right, so if I press play, skip that, skip that. They're not the same, they're false. Because in a computer system, a capital P and a little p are completely separate. Okay, if I go... Does not if C does not equal D, I get true, because a capital P is not the same as a little p. Okay, that's just a quick example for you. Now this video has gone on long enough, if you ask me, and we've just only just gotten to variables and all the different types of operators. If you can take even a moderate understanding of all of those away to the next video, we're going to deal with user input and how we deal with errors when it comes to user input, because that's where things might start going wrong. Basically, hopefully you should walk away with variables in your mind, data types in your mind, and different operators. I'm sorry if any of this was confusing. Please email me if you have any suggestions or whatever like that. But I'll see you in the next video, and good luck and happy programming, everyone.